Greetings, and thank you for joining us for another SANS ICS Concept Overview. I'm Don C. Weber of Cutaway Security and a certified SANS instructor. In this video, we will demonstrate a man-in-the-middle attack against a simulated voltage regulator. We will use the EtherCap tool with a custom filter to deploy an ARP spoofing attack and block modifications to the process. If you enjoy this video and the topics we cover in the SANS ICS Concept Overviews, be sure to like and subscribe to this channel. Leave a comment if you have a question about this topic or suggestions for future content. As we've discussed in previous concept overview videos, processes are managed and controlled with industrial protocols, such as Modbus. In our previous videos, we talked about Modbus enumeration, we analyzed Modbus traffic using Wireshark and T-Shark. Okay? These Communications usually occur between an engineer or operator workstation, an HMI, uh, to some type of endpoint. So uh, a PLC, uh, another endpoint that's Modbus capable. We can also see that traffic going from PLC to PLC, depending on uh, the configuration of that process. Uh, these interactions are normal, and they're usually limited to that control network. However, if an attacker can get onto that control network, if they can compromise one of those systems, like an engineer or operator workstation, they can. one of the attacks that they can use is to run a man-in-the-middle attack. Uh, the, you know, the best known way to do that is to uh, leverage a Unix-based or Linux-based system, run the EtherCap tool to perform an ARP spoofing attack, and if successfully implemented, the traffic between two devices will be going through that compromised device. In this image right here, we see an HMI uh, and a PLC. Communications typically would be going straight from the HMI uh, directed at the uh, Modbus server on the PLC, uh, and the exchange would go directly between these two devices. Okay, so we would see Modbus reads for a view of the process. If we wanted control, if we wanted to control something, such as turning it on and off, then we would send Modbus writes. But in this case, we see that one of the systems on this network has been compromised. The engineer workstation has been compromised, and an ARP spoofing attack has been initiated. And what happens is, is the traffic going from the HMI, instead of going straight to the PLC or the endpoint, it will actually pa be passed through the engineer's workstation, which will forward that information on to its intended destination. And then when the PLC replies, instead of going straight through the HMI, it will go through the engineer workstation and then be forwarded to the HMI. Okay. And this allows the attackers to uh, do several things with that, uh, with that communications. Most of the time, attackers are looking for credentials. They're trying to get access to the credentials that are being exchanged between these two endpoints. But, this, but the EtherCat tool also provides them with the capabilities of changing those communications. In other words, it will stop the packets in transit review for specific information, which you'll see in just a second, and then take actions on it, whether it's changing that exchange or dropping it completely. Okay, and that's what we'll see. So with this video, what we're going to do is we're going to provide a simulation of all of this. We're going to have an HMI, which is going to be our Windows systems, which we'll look over it in, in just a moment. We're going to have a program logic controller. Actually, we're going to simulate a voltage regulator, not a program logic controller, just so just a voltage regulator. That's you know maybe it's powering an endpoint uh, device or powering a uh, a PLC, something that we can uh, uh, interact with control using Modbus. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and set that up right now. I've got the I'm going to go ahead and come up here to activities and start typing typing Modbus PAL. This will start my Modbus PAL program, which is my Modbus simulator. I'm going to load a project, and I'm going to load our voltage regulator. And this is already configured for registers and coils uh, to uh, perform, perform the voltage uh, regulator activity. 
we're going to start start our automation and click on this I right here. Uh, we'll review our uh, um, registers real quick that we could interact with. We can see that our uh, input voltage is varying, you know, simulating load going through this voltage regulator. But what we're going to interact with for this tutorial is we're going to talk about this enable output. So we have coils uh, and uh, this coil is specifically managing whether or not uh, this voltage regulator is supplying power. So if this value is true, which is true right now, then it's uh, um, uh, then the output is enabled uh, and it is uh, providing power to whatever's connected to it. If we change this to false, if we put, put a zero value in here, uh, then it will be disabled and it won't be providing that power anymore. And so that's what we're going to manipulate within this example. I want to go ahead and start my uh, voltage regulator. So now it's running on the network. It should be accessible. And I'm going to go ahead and switch over to our simulated HMI, which is just our Windows system. Uh, I don't have a GUI. I don't have a fancy GUI. Um, but what I do ha have is the Rodbus client that I used in some of our other tutorials. Okay, So Rodbus client, I'm going to be uh, um, this this client is going to send Modbus commands. I have to tell it the host. So my voltage regulator is at this IP address 139.131. It's listening on port 10502, slightly different than the default. I'm going to read coils starting at address 0 and the quantity of 2. So I want to read two coils. And we can see here these are the values that we expected that we just saw with our voltage regulator when we were on uh, the other VM. We see that that first coil is true. And I can actually go through here and I can make modifications to that. I can send a command that will change that to false. So using my Rodbus client, simulating like an HMI, I would just, you know, uh, in an, on an HMI, I would just be, uh, you know, possibly clicking a button uh, and it would send the Modbus command. In this case, Rodbus client is going to write to a single coil starting at index zero. It's going to change it to false. So when I run this command and then I read the values again, we can see that I have disabled that device. So it is no longer providing power to the things that are connected to it. All right? And that's ex as expected. This is operating normally. This is the um, uh, expected functionality for our process. I'm going to set back that back to true. So now we know it's true. Now we know it's running and so forth. Okay, so we have our HMI communications going to our voltage regulator. They're exchanging information as expected. But if I was an attacker and I has and and, and I was able to compromise, gain access to the control network, compromise one of the systems on there, elevate my privileges because typically this is going to require um, elevated privileges to run these uh, uh, this type of attack. If I'm able to do that. Um, this is how I would do it with the uh, leveraging uh, adder, the adder cap tool. And the adder cap will normally, by default, will monitor the traffic that is ex exchanged to the two endpoints. So once it starts its ARP spoofing attack, it will monitor those communications. But it needs a filter file to understand what to do with those communications. And, and this is, uh, we, we've already written one up for this. Uh, what happens is, is if uh, when this filter is implemented, it will monitor all the traffic and it will test to see whether or not the destination, the IP destination, is the IP address of our voltage regulator. If that's true, it checks to, to determine whether that packet is destined for a port 10502. If that's true, then it evaluates the information within that packet. In other words, it's going to look for those Modbus write commands. The offset for that, so if we went to our TCP data, the seventh byte is going to be that Modbus function code. Uh, so we're going to look for the hex values 5, 6, 15, and 16. Okay, and if those bytes, if that seventh byte is any one of those numbers, in other words, are one of our Modbus write function codes, then it's going to go into this if statement and it's going to drop that packet. 
uh, drop is just a command that's provided uh, by the uh, EdderCap filter language. Uh, down in the show notes, we have uh, um, uh, I've provided a link to uh, the EdderCap filter uh, examples, um, which will help you understand what you can and can't do uh, within uh, um, this uh, uh, within a, a EdderCap filter file. In this case, we're going to drop those right commands. We're also going to log, and this is going to log a message to our terminal. It's going to tell us that, hey, you know, uh, we did drop this. Uh, we did drop a rod bus, a mod bus, right message. Okay. So we've we've uh, set this up. We've saved it, um, but we need to put it into a form that is acceptable for EdderCap. In other words, we have to compile it basically. So that's what I'm going to do with this command. Edder, the edder filter command will take uh, um, a filter file and then it will compile it. And we have to tell it what to name it. So the dash O option is just what to name it. And we're just going to add an EF on the end of it. We can see that it compiled correctly. If it, there was an issue with our file, if we had it uh, um, formatted incorrectly, there would be an error uh, message that was displayed to us. And so we'd have to go and make some modifications to our filter file. But if we do an, uh, a listing, we can see that we have our filter file. And then we also have our compiled version as well. So now we're ready for the EdderCap command. Okay. And I also have this set up already right here. And we'll review this real quick. So sudo, does re this does require uh, administrative privileges, like, as I mentioned. EdderCap is the tool, the attack tool that we're going to use here. We have to pass it the dash t function because we want to tell it that don't run its GUI because it will have a GUI that uh, could pop up. You could run do this all through the GUI. But we want to stay in the terminal, so we're going to use the dash t for terminal. We have to tell it which interface that we want it to run its attack on. So if we have a, a multiple uh, a machine with uh, multiple network interfaces, we'd have to specify which one it is. So we're doing that here. The dash capital F command is our filter. So this is our attack filter. And uh, um, so we've provided that uh, um, it's, we're pointing it to the compiled version of that editor filter file. Dash Q is uh, to tell EdderCap to be quiet. Don't print out all of the packet information, incoming information. Only print out the stuff that's uh, um, specifically logged. The M is which module to run. So we're going to run the ARP spoofing module. And so we're just going to attach. Uh, um, uh, so the capital dash capital M followed by ARP. We'll tell it to ARP spoof. And then we have to tell it our targets. Okay, so there's going to be target one and target two. Uh, in this case, we're targeting target one is our voltage regulator. So you can see 139.1. Now these different slashes are, are extremely important. You know, look to the uh, um, information provided through EdderCap, uh, and we provide our IPv4 information here. Um, if there is IPv6, we can actually specify uh, IPv6 addresses um, and port numbers as well. Uh, but in this case, we just want to our our first target is going to be vo our voltage regulator, and our second target is going to be our HMI. Now we could ARP spoof the whole network if we wanted to. I want to be really careful with this because I don't want to bring down processes. Uh, even if I was an attacker, that's what I wanted to do. I, I, I wouldn't want to uh, ARP spoof everything because potentially it could have a negative impact uh, on the process. I want to have a specific impact on it uh, rather than bringing the whole thing down. So I'm going to have my target one is my voltage regulator. Target two is my HMI. So the communication going between those uh, two systems are what I'm going to attack. So let's copy this. We'll paste it into our terminal. We'll hit enter. And then if there's no problems, uh, EdderCap is just going to start up. If there was a problem, we'd have a, a, an error message here. And so as we can see, it started It started ARP poisoning uh, um, our uh, two different targets. And the, the attack should be running successfully now. And we'll test that by going back over to our HMI system, so our Windows systems, where we're doing the, the, the Rodbus client command simulating the HMI before. So let me go ahead and clear this out. 
as you can see from our previous commands, uh, we want to read our coils uh, and make sure that uh, we're good to go. And then we're going to do our write command. So let's go ahead and do that. So we should be able to do reads and those should go through uh, correctly. And so we see that our voltage regulator is enabled. It is supplying power to its endpoints. But now if I go through and I want to hit the button on my HMI, hey, I want to stop that device, uh, you know, turn off that portion of the process, turn off that endpoint, uh, and uh, I hit my button, which would generate the command to change that value to false, and stop, stop providing power to it. Now if I hit enter, what happens is now I see an error response timeout, which means that I know in this case, that means that the command didn't go through. So if I go read that, again, we can see that the state didn't change. And I can run that multiple times. Hey, I want this off. Turn it off. And I'm going to keep getting these error messages. I'm going to keep getting timeouts. And if we go back over to our attacker system, we'll see that it is indeed telling us that, hey, we dropped Modbus write messages to it. So we've, what we've done is we've uh, implemented a loss of control. It's not a loss of view. So if we go back over to our Windows system, it's not a loss of view, it's, uh, but it is a loss of control to that system. So in this case, reviewing one more time, uh, the attack is implemented right now. A command is being sent from our HMI. It's going through our engineer workstation. It, the EdderCap tool is identifying that it's a Modbus write. Because of its filter, it's saying, hey, you can't send more uh, Modbus writes, and it's just dropping that packet. And then when the HMI requests like information about, you know, are you, st you know, are you still running? What's your current state? that view those Modbus reads are passed through the engineer workstation and it comes back from the uh, voltage regulator and displays correctly. So in this concept overview, we've discussed how man in the middle attacks are accomplished within an ICS environment. And we've demonstrated how attackers may block and modify traffic using Modbus writes as an example. Now, this type of attack is understood. It's been used out in the field a number of times. So there, there have been many organizations that have fell, fallen victim to this attack. Threat actors are actually implementing it. So what I've done is I've gone through, I've, I've located, you know, did, done some cr quick research, located some information from the Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency, uh, some of the alerts that they've produced associated with a known man-in-the-middle attacks. And I've also included some references to uh, other education about man-in-the-middle attacks within ICS environments. So there's, uh, um, uh, there's students and educators from around the world, including SANS, uh, that have already talked about this uh, for many, many years. Hopefully you understand it visually a little bit better. If you want to research it some more, go look at some of those uh, resources as well. Thank you for tuning in to another concept overview with the SANS ICS and Cutaway Security teams. Please let us know if there are other topics you would like us to cover in the comments below. If you enjoyed the content, please be sure to like and subscribe to the SANS ICS YouTube channel. This has been Don C. Weber of Cutaway Security. Go forth and do good things.